Hello my friends, today we are going to the US state of Alaska to see how farming and livestock work here. Agriculture may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Alaska. Snow-capped mountains and vast glaciers are what we often hear about in this remote state. Despite being the largest state in the United States with 365 million acres, only about 883,000 acres are cultivated in Alaska. According to statistics, in 2021, there are 513 farms in Alaska. Operating on these farms are mainly vegetable farming, cattle raising, reindeer, pigs and goats. In addition, farming and fishing is also a very famous industry in this state. Currently, most of the farms in Alaska are concentrated in the northeast of Anchorage City. This is a bison farm in the city of Delta Junction in the southeastern part of Alaska. Here, about 65 bison are grazing on fenced pastures. Currently, Alaska has about 915 bison distributed on 34 different farms. Most of the bison here are raised for meat and some other recreational purposes such as hunting. Each morning, dozens of bison at this farm will be herded to the grasslands to freely feed. Around these vast grasslands is a protective fence system, so there are almost no predators that can attack the bison. A full-grown bison has an average weight of 1,800 pounds and females an average weight of 960 pounds. Each day, each bison here needs to eat food equivalent to about 4% of their body weight. Every year in Alaska, about 230 bison are slaughtered for meat. Meanwhile, the number of bison slaughtered each year across the country is more than 20,000 head. Here are the cattle ranches in Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. Because of the cold weather, herds in Alaska usually spend up to three quarters of the year living indoors. And each year, they only spend about 100 days foraging in the grasslands. According to the USDA statistics, each year, about 6,800 calves are born in Alaska and the state's cattle population has always remained at around 25,000. The main forage used for the herds here is grass and hay. In winter, fodder will be spread on the snow-covered ground and hundreds of cattle will feed here all day. Due to living in a harsh environment, the quality of beef in Alaska is also appreciated compared to other places in the United States. In addition to bison and cattle, the musk oxen is also a famous animal in Alaska. This is an animal that was once considered extinct in Alaska due to overhunting. By 1930, 34 musk oxen have been shipped to Alaska from Canada and today their number has grown to more than 5,000. This is a musk oxen farm in the city of Fairbanks. It is home to more than 60 musk oxen. Like cattle, musk oxen spend most of the year living on the farm. In the summer, when the weather is warmer, they will be herded by ranchers to the fields and cliffs to feed freely. Basically, the behavior of the musk oxen is similar to the bison living in this state. On average, an adult male musk ox 
weighs between 800 and 900 pounds, and the weight of the females is about 600 pounds. Goodbye livestock farms. Now we will go to vegetable farms in Alaska to see how the process of cultivating and harvesting vegetables takes place. This is a nursery with millions of lettuce plants. After about two weeks in the nursery, millions of these lettuce plants will be moved to the fields to start a new life. Basically, the process of growing lettuce in Alaska is similar to other states like Arizona, Florida or California. After nearly two months since planting, millions of lettuce plants here will be harvested in early October. The process of harvesting lettuce is done everywhere by dozens of farmhands, which is similar to the process of vegetable harvesting in Arizona and California. In addition to lettuce, cabbage, carrots and pumpkin are also vegetables grown in Alaska. Next, we'll head to the southeastern waters of Alaska to see how the fishing of millions of salmon goes on. From mid-May to September is the best time to catch salmon in Alaska. Every year, about 9,000 boats flock to this area to fish and about 34 of these boats sink or have accidents. In 2021, about 223 million salmon have been caught in this sea and the revenue of this fish is about $745 million. After thousands of salmon have entered a net, they will be pulled by these fishermen onto a boat and transferred to the storage tank below the boat. Currently, salmon caught in Alaska accounts for 93% of salmon production in the United States. The remaining salmon is mainly farmed in the waters of Washington and Maine. According to the Alaska Fishing Employment Center, trout fishers typically earn about $17,000 within a three months of working. Hello my friends, along with the United States, some countries in Europe such as Germany, France or the Netherlands are always considered to be the most modern agricultural countries in the world. In today's video, we will say goodbye to the US farms and visit some farms in Europe to see how the farmers here harvest thousands of tons of vegetables and fruits. The first place that we will visit in this video is a cucumber field in the German state of Bavaria. About 20 workers, including both men and women, will lie on this machine and pick millions of cucumbers. This is a very special way of harvesting cucumbers that we don't see in the US cucumber fields. Millions of cucumbers after picking will be transferred to the truck's trunk thanks to the conveyor system. Currently in Germany, there are about 6,000 acres of agricultural land used for cucumber cultivation and the annual yield is about 261,000 tons, of which Bavaria is the state that accounts for 35% of the country's cucumber production. Next, we will go to a sweet corn farm in France to see how the process of harvesting hundreds of tons of sweet corn here goes. 
Unlike sweet corn farms in the United States, most sweet corn in France is harvested by machines instead of using migrant workers. According to statistics, in 2021, there are about 56,000 acres of farmland in France used to produce sweet corn, and the area of sweet corn in this country is the second largest in Europe, after Hungary. In recent years, French sweet corn production has always remained at 183,000 tonnes, seven times less than the amount of sweet corn produced in the United States. Once harvested, millions of ears of sweet corn are filled into truckloads before being shipped to a processing plant. Currently, up to 82% of sweet corn in France is processed into canned sweet corn. This is what is happening in a cabbage field in the Netherlands. At some cabbage farms in the Netherlands, harvesting is also done manually with dozens of workers. Thousands of cabbages will be cut and transferred into containers with this conveyor system. The process of harvesting cabbage here is similar to harvesting millions of cabbages in the US state of Arizona. The end of September to November every year is when thousands of laborers flock to cabbage farms in the Netherlands to work. On average, these workers will work six hours a day and their pay is about $35 per hour. This is the process of harvesting in another cabbage field in the Netherlands. This modern machine will be used to pull the cabbages out of the ground. Next, the cabbage roots will also be automatically cut off before they are transferred to the truck. In 2021, the Netherlands has about 26,000 acres of farmland used for cabbage production and the yield is about 61,000 tonnes. The fifth place we visit in this video is a field growing peas in France. Billions of pea plants here will be cut by these modern machines. After cutting, this machine will separate the stem and the peas will be transferred to the tank area of the machine. Once harvested, billions of peas are transferred from the harvester's storage tank to the truck's container before being transported to the processing plant. In 2021, the area used for planting peas in France is about 24,000 acres and the yield is about 255,000 tonnes. Currently, China is the largest pea producer in the world with 12.5 million tonnes, followed by India with 5.4 million tonnes and the United States with 275,000 tonnes. Here's what's going on at a plum farm in Serbia. The process of harvesting plums here is quite similar to the harvesting of almonds and pistachios in California. This machine will be used to grip the plum tree and shake it vigorously to make thousands of plums fall. Thousands of plums are then transferred to plastic trays in this way. The job of these workers is to remove part of the leaves mixed in with the plums. In 2021, the area under plum cultivation in Serbia is about 72,000 acres and the yield is about 713,000 tonnes. Currently, China is the world leader in plum production with about 6.6 .6 million tonnes per year. The United States is also one of the countries with a large plum production in the world with about 265,000 tons. 
The last place to appear in this video is a green bean field in the Netherlands. Basically, harvesting green peas is quite similar to the process of harvesting peas. Currently, in the Netherlands, about 3,000 acres of farmland are used to produce chickpeas and the annual production of chickpeas is about 33,000 tonnes, eight times less than China, which produces 76% of the chickpea production all around the world. Billions of green beans after harvest we poured into truck containers before being transported to processing and packaging plants. Hello my friends. Mexico is known as a land of vibrant culture and rich history. Besides this, the country's agriculture is also a notable point. Mexico's agricultural landscape is diverse, with a wide variety of crops, livestock and farming methods honed over centuries. In today's video, we can learn how Mexican farmers use 79.3 million acres of agricultural land. Cultivation is the most important aspect of Mexican agriculture, accounting for 53% of agricultural output. When it comes to farming, we cannot ignore blue agave. This is a potential crop favoured by Mexican farmers. Blue agave is produced mainly in five states of Mexico. Guanajuato, Jalisco, Michoacán, Nayarit and Oaxaca. In particular, Jalisco and Oaxaca are considered the two main blue agave production areas in the world. Currently, we are at a blue agave field on a farm in Michoacán. Blue agave plants take 8 to 10 years to mature. And when they reach a weight of about 80 to 200 pounds, they are ready for harvest. According to Mexico's National Tequila Industry Chamber, there are more than 150 million mature blue agave plants that have been harvested in 2022, with a total production of more than 1.77 million tonnes. Skilled farmers use sharp tools to remove these leaves, then the blue agave is plucked from the ground. After harvest, blue agave plants are transported to processing facilities. Here they undergo a cooking process converting starch into sugar, which is then extracted and fermented to produce alcohol. Each year, about 420,000 cases of blue agave wine are sent to more than 47 countries around the world. In addition to blue agave production, Mexico is also a major contributor to the world's avocado volume. Thanks to its climate and fertile soil, the avocado season in Mexico lasts almost all year round and is grown mainly in Michoacán, Jalisco, Colima, Nayarit and Chiapas. Of these, Michoacán accounts for 92% of the country's avocado production. With more than 274,000 acres planted, Michoacán is considered a hub for Mexican avocado exports to the US. This is also the only place in the world where avocados can bloom 365 days a year. After Michoacán, Alisco ranks second with about 68,750 acres. Here, avocado gardens are gradually spreading and dominating the landscape. According to data from FAO STAT, global avocado production 
increased to nearly 8.7 million tonnes in 2022, of which Mexico accounted for 2.4 million tonnes, and the majority of Mexican avocados were exported to the US. Located in the heart of the volcanic belt, with more than 100 volcanoes, these avocado trees grow strongly and produce high yields. Strict quality control is applied throughout the avocado's development process. Farmers use poles like this to pick avocados directly from the tree to avoid bruising the fruit. Farmers at this avocado garden shared that once an avocado touches the ground, it will not be exported. Upon arrival at the packaging plant, the avocados are washed and pass quality tests. These farmers then quickly pack them into 55 pound boxes. In just 48 hours, fresh avocados will be on supermarket shelves in the area. Besides avocado production, Mexico is also in the top 10 largest corn producing countries in the world, contributing to ensure an abundant and continuous supply for the demand of this food crop. Corn is grown in most states in Mexico. Notably, Sinaloa produces crops according to the fall winter cycle, and Jalisco produces crops according to the spring summer cycle. These two states are responsible for producing one third of Mexico's corn. Corn thrives in temperatures between 21 and 27 degrees during the summer months. It takes about three to four months for corn to mature and be ready to harvest. Corn is harvested in dry weather to avoid mold. And most Mexican farmers will harvest by hand like this. Large-scale corn fields in Sonora are entering harvest time. Farmers will use machines to harvest and save time, as well as improving productivity. Besides this, Sonora is also a state with a long growing season and cool temperatures that allow farmers to produce better quality corn crops. Besides lush corn fields, Mexico is also known to more than 12.9 million horses. Let's see how the horses live in this country. If poultry is raised mainly for eggs, cattle is raised mainly for meat, then horses are raised mainly to replace labor. Mexican farmers use horses in agriculture, construction, mining, tourism, and transportation activities. Mexican farmers' attachment to horses is extremely strong. This is because they are an extremely important part of their livelihood. Their working day will begin with preparations like this. The trailer's hitch is attached to the horse's body. Relying on horse traction, Mexican farmers save capital invested in machinery and labor. In the agricultural sector, horses will assist farmers in transporting agricultural products. They replace tractors to cut grass, till soil, plant and haul wood. After work, these horses are brought back to the barn for care. As you can see, their main meals are usually straw and hay. Besides being used as draft power, each year thousands of horses are transported to slaughterhouses in Mexico for meat production. In recent years, Mexico has been one of the most important horse meat suppliers in the world. Mexico's horse meat exports were worth about 1.98 million in 2022. Profit from livestock farming is always the goal that farmers aim for. Not only in the horse industry, beef cattle farmers in Mexico are also no exception. 
In recent years, Mexican beef production has continued to grow and total domestic consumption has remained relatively stable. This has led to increasing beef exports from Mexico. According to the USDA, in 2023, Mexico is in the top 10 largest beef cattle exporting countries in the world, with an annual output of about 8.5 million cows. Beef cattle grow in extensive grazing systems, occupying a large and highly valuable territory of Mexico. At the end of the pasture fattening period, these beef cows are taken to the slaughter plant. Here they are killed, cleaned, cut, preserved and packaged. Finally, finished beef will appear on the shelves of supermarkets in the area. The same goes for agricultural commodities like horse meat or butter. The US is the largest consumer of Mexican beef exports, accounting for more than 80% of beef exports. In contrast, the beef cattle industry in Mexico also contributes a very important part to the US consumer market. It acts as a supplier, contributing to diversifying product sources to help customers have more choices. According to statistics, the US Department of Agriculture said that Mexico's beef cattle exports to the US market will reach 22% by 2023, up to 1.1 million cattle.